there are parts that are not as favorite as others, just like your job. But there are times, you guys, when I get so full that I have to get up and walk around, otherwise I'm going to just come falling apart all over everywhere because of the glory, because of the power of the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, this last couple of weeks preparing for today was like that. There were many times I had to just get up and walk around. Because it was just so powerful, the Word and the presence of the Holy Spirit. I want to say a, a, another thank you again, uh, Brother Jeremiah, that, that brought the Word of God last Sunday, and that was so powerful so powerful and I pray that you will continue to receive what God has for you out of that great message on hope it is it is on our uh, YouTube right Isaac I think it, yeah it's on our YouTube and uh, YouTube channel Portland Metro Church Acts 16:31 says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved that is one of those great passages of Scripture like John 3.16 that every one of us needs to have memorized and all that good stuff. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 30 and 31. But of Him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that as it is written, He who glories... Let him glory in the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you, God, for the awesome presence of your Holy Spirit in this place. Holy Spirit, come. Do what only you can do in our hearts and lives today, God. Minister to every need and reveal your self to us in Jesus' name. Continue revealing yourself to us today in Jesus' name. Everybody said. Amen. Some of the best of the good news of the gospel is that we are saved by faith alone and not by works. The sin of Adam resulted in the sin and ruin of all of his descendants. But thank God that is not the end of the story. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 5.19 But by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. That is not the end of the story. Thank you that by another man, we were all made righteous. Hallelujah. And that's what we're talking about today. Some of the good news of the good news. God, after Adam and Eve fell and the consequences of their sin began affecting us, God revealed His plan to save the whole human race by His wonderful grace. And He placed our salvation on a new foundation by a covenant of redemption. And this covenant between, this covenant of redemption, this covenant of salvation is between the Father and the Son to save all mankind. And it is the foundation of the covenant of grace. So let's talk about our covenant relationship with God, shall we? In the covenant, in this covenant redemption, I want to kind of repeat something that I just said. Uh, we human beings are merely the subject of the covenant. We are not in the purest sense, the parties of the covenant. We are only the subject of the covenant. This is one of those places where I had to get up and walk around. The, the covenant parties are God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They have made this covenant among themselves and with us to save us by God's rich and wonderful grace. Amen. The Son, His Majesty, the Lord Jesus is the head. 
and the representative of all, of all the people as Adam was the natural head of the human race. Jesus is the covenant head of all the church, of all believers. It was made with, revealed to Adam after the fall, revealed further to Abraham, and, uh, and further on in the Word of God it is revealed to us and the obedience and the death of Jesus Christ for us is the only reason a person can be saved. Not the obedience of anybody else, including ourselves. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Now there are times when we forget that. And the devil is right there to try to prod us back into the law. But G Jesus went to the cross to abolish the law so that we could be saved by grace and grace alone through faith. We, we need those reminders on the fridge or on the wall of a shower or on the inside of our eyeballs that remind us that salvation is by grace alone. It's not based on your goodness or my goodness. It is based on the perfect goodness of Jesus. As a man, Jesus had to obey for himself, first of all. If he did not obey, he would become a transgressor. But he did fully obey. And his death fully satisfied the demands of justice. Therefore, grace and not justice, ladies and gentlemen, has made His righteousness your righteousness. Don't get up and shout and run around the room yet. Just, we're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost ready for a victory run. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, you guys. Jesus obeyed the law. If Jesus had obeyed the law only for us, justice would have made his obedience ours and we could have obtained salvation by right instead of asking for it through grace. Jesus voluntarily took on our nature and laid down his life to pay for our sins and God in His grace considers His obedience as ours and sees us as though we are righteous. Anybody need to get the water? <laughs> it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He is saved. Hallelujah. Her, this covenant relationship that we have with God, ladies and gentlemen, goes like this. You, you may have to unbuckle your seatbelt and get ready to go for a run. Our relationship to Jesus is such that whatever is given to Him is given to us. Whatever is His or whatever he has done, either as God or as man, is given to us by covenant with God when we put our faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are made righteous. We are king's kids. We have all the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Even though the IRS may say differently. <laughs> Even though the tax collector may say differently. We have, a, we have riches beyond our imagination that we have received by grace through faith. So, so our part of the covenant, your part of the covenant, is faith. Faith is the eye that sees Faith is the hand that takes hold. Faith is the instrument that we use to possess the blessings of the covenant. And by faith, the soul comes to possess 
all that is embraced in that act of faith, friends. You say it to you this way. If you've not received the breaking of the bonds of your sin, if you have not had your soul set free, it's because you have not allowed your faith in Jesus to become full and complete in your life. There is, there is breaking of bondage. There is freedom. There is a new life available, friends, and all we have to do is ex exercise what even tiny little bit of faith we, need, we feel we have. And, and friends, the Bible still says that even the tiniest amount of faith is able to move mountains. Hallelujah! It's not, it's not how much, it's do we use what we got. And so we, we need to use what we got. Let's talk about the benefits of the covenant. Yeah, we've been already talking about the benefits of the covenant. 1 Corinthians 1.30 again says, But of him you are in Christ Jesus. Notice that it says you are already of him and you are in him. Who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Real quickly, let's let's talk about the wisdom. If we use our faith in Him, friends, we'll be directed by the wisdom of God. You'll have those aha moments where you'll you'll say to yourself, "I didn't know I knew that. I didn't know I knew that. I didn't know I had that wisdom, and it was a gift from God." Sometimes we call that a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. A, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the infinite source of wisdom. And, and anybody thinks they can figure out uh, the wisdom of God has been deceived. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 says, For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. And we as believers have the spirit of God in us revealing to us wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. In other words, we can't understand or know things of God unless we have the Spirit of God in us. Great illustration of that is it's kind of like trying to teach a pure intellectual about love. Trying to teach a pure intellectual about emotional stuff. Anybody in the room remember uh, the first series of Star Trek. And, and one of my favorites was Spock, who was a pure intellectual. I don't know, was he a Klingon? Or, no, he wasn't. He was a Vulcan. He was a Vulcan. Whatever that is. And there were those times when he would just, you know, give that blank, what are you talking about? He would because it was an emotional thing that Captain Kirk was trying, or somebody else was trying to explain to him. The same is true, friends, when, when you and I start talking about the things of God with someone who has not yet experienced it. it you'll, if you haven't already, you'll get those deer in the headlights looks. You'll get those Spock looks from people that will not understand what you're talking about. It has to be experienced. It would be kind of like trying to teach a blind person or explain color to a blind person. They have to experience it in order to be able to. Friends, uh, and you and I may be able to explain the law to a sinner and, and crush them by the conviction of the Holy Spirit, but they will never get it. They'll never understand until they experience the love and grace and glory of God. Let's look at the second benefit really quickly. Jesus became for us righteousness. Righteousness means holiness and, or obedience to the law. Jesus also became for us sanctification. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 30 and 31 tell us. 
which basically are, in, in a big sense, the same kind of thing. Jesus is our outward righteousness. His obedience is under the covenant of grace applied to us. He didn't obey for us. God considers uh, His righteousness as our substitute. Jesus obeyed in our place, but as a matter of grace, we are treated as if we obeyed. Wow. <clears throat> we are justified, friends, as though we had never sinned, as though we had always been holy. And that righteousness of Jesus becomes ours by a gift from God. A good example of that is when a, a person has done service for their country and the government by, by serving in the military, our government rewards them. Not, all, not only does the individual themselves receive the reward, but the entire household receives the reward because they are family. Human governments do this uh, and the reason is very plain. The same is true of the followers of Jesus. The Father was so delighted and so thankful for the service of Jesus that Jesus provided for the kingdom of God that he applies the righteousness of Jesus to his followers as if it is their very own. We are rewarded for our faith in Jesus, for what Jesus has done for us. Oh, you guys, what a wonderful covenant God has made with us. In other words, God treats the followers of Jesus just as he treats his son, his majesty, the Lord Jesus. Does that help? Yes. <laughs> oh. When we, when we get this, friends, there is no mountain high enough. There is no devil mean and ugly enough to hold us back from the glory and the blessing and the awesome of understanding who we are in Christ because of what Jesus has done for us. Oh, you guys. I don't know if you walked by the, the office doors this morning but, and saw a little bit of a pile of stuff in the walkway there. The guys uh, that are working on our siding, you probably noticed the siding was painted. <laughs> but they're, they're working on the crosses that are going to go up on the highest where the louvers are on the bell tower. so important in the second that begins, you begin reminding him of how much God loves you and that God loves you. You just say it out loud to the devil. Devil, God loves me just as much as he loves his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So you get out of here. Amen. Amen. It's not today. <laughs> the third thing that I want you to see with me in the 
talk about really quickly, kind of, is the author of holiness and redemption. Romans 5.5 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. The Holy Spirit works in us, friends, and He pours out the love of God into our hearts through faith, and we are made holy. Hallelujah. Jesus is not some removed, remote reason for our holiness, friends. Jesus is the direct cause of our holiness because of what He has done for us, friends. And our faith in Jesus is the act that we must do that takes hold of the sanctification and the and the all the other great blessings that God has for us. A good example of this, friends, is uh, the child who puts their hand in the hand of their father, uh, leading them wherever the father wants to lead them. Remember those days? <laughs> Some of you here are, are yet to experience that. You come to an intersection and uh, you wait for the, the walk sign and you take hold of your kids' hands. And when they're young, they're happy to take hold of your hand and walk across. When they get a little older, it's like, oh, Dad, I can walk on my own. I see the light. I'm going to stay right beside you, and, and I'm not going to uh, get run over. <laughs> Friends, the same is true of us by faith. When we put our lives in the hands of God and allow ourselves to be controlled by the Holy Spirit and by our love for God, then we stop trying to walk alone and we put ourselves back in the hands of Jesus. When we, when we try to win our salvation by our works, it's like we have taken ourselves out of the hands of Jesus and said to God, I can, I can handle this on my own. Oh, no, you don't want to be there. You cannot handle that on your own. You may be really awesome, but you cannot handle that on your own. You need to leave yourself in the hands of God. And trust in Him. Hold tightly. That, that next part says that Jesus is our redemption. 1 Corinthians 1.30, Jesus became for us redemption. Redemption, friends, in the English is not as, as big a word as it is in the Hebrew and in Jewish history. Redemption refers to the practice of redeeming or paying to recover or reinstate an estate or a relative that has been sold to pay a debt. Can you believe that? Boy, that was another world. To sell a family member in order to pay a debt? You know, and hopefully they signed up for that duty, you know, uh, said, okay, you can sell me and, and I'll pay the debt and and then hopefully the debt gets paid off really quick and you get the family member back. <laughs> Boy, you know, from the statistics I've heard about the indebtedness of Americans, we'd have a whole lot of family members in jail. Which is not God's will for you. Is this a good time to talk about? I know we're off the subject, but ladies and gentlemen, you know, because of these last days and and uh, who knows what kind of crazy stuff is, is going to happen until the big T tribulation starts happening. Uh, you must get yourself out of debt. Pay it off. Get it paid off so that you are no man's debtor. You are no bank's debtor. You are no creditor's debtor. Amen. And, and you will be controlled by the Holy Spirit and not by some banker. Amen, Pastor John. Good preaching. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Redemption. So when an estate had been sold uh, and the individual is deprived of their liberty for that debt, they could be redeemed or 
returned or reinstated by paying off the debt. While we were in our sins, under the law, we were sold as slaves at the hand of public justice. We are bound until death and have no possible way to redeem ourselves from the curse of the law. But Christ paid the price of our redemption. Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Jesus paid the price to redeem you from the devil, from the power of sin. You are no longer under that debt. Jesus paid it. The devil comes to lie to you, but he is a liar. Jesus has paid the debt. So let's talk about God's unmerited favor, shall we? Fourth point. In the new covenant of grace, works of the law have no more to do with our salvation than if we had never existed, ladies and gentlemen. Under the law, salvation depended on us. Under the covenant of grace, we receive salvation as a free gift as we put our faith in Jesus. Our own holiness doesn't matter even at all, ladies and gentlemen. Are you with me? In order to receive salvation, we may be Come very holy, but Jesus Christ forever will be the sole reason that we are not in hell. Our faith in Christ means we possess Christ. We, he is ours and we are His. The very blessing promised in the covenant with Abraham and in all of the Bible, Jesus is the sum and substance of all God's favor to us. He is the bread of life. He is the water of life, ladies and gentlemen. He is the light of the world. He is our righteousness. He is our sanctifier. He is our peace. He is our healer. He is our provider, our provision. He is our protection. He is our shepherd. He is our strength. He is our everything. He's everything we want and everything we need. Let's give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. You're everything we need. You're everything we need and you're everything we want, Lord. Our faith, ladies and gentlemen, gives us everything that is Christ's. It belongs to us. I believe that is one of the reasons why we have been given the privilege of praying in faith, praying the prayer of faith, because we have been given the authority of Christ. Everything that Jesus is and has has been given to us because we are His, because we put our faith in Him. We are in His family now. Amen. Amen. We have been given all things in Christ. Our faith in Jesus destroys all those things that stand in the way. All of that stuff has been blown out of the way, praise the Lord, by our faith in Jesus. Jesus has said in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into them and dine with them and they with me. And friends, as long as we depend on ourselves and not on our faith in Jesus, we keep that door shut. That door has not been opened. I, I plead with you this morning. If you are still trying to work your way or, or if you, if you b hear and believe the lies of the devil saying you're not good enough, ladies and gentlemen, you have kept the door closed. Open that door and let Jesus come in. And trust fully and completely in Him. Throw yourself into the grace of God. Throw yourself into the arms of Jesus. <laughs> Until we totally trust in the righteousness of Christ, friends. We're still trying to work out our own salvation all by ourselves. We're trying to work out our own righteousness. 
fact, let me say it to you another way. Jesus will not patch up your righteousness and make it work. <laughs> None of our righteousnesses will work. Bible says all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. Oh, that is that is the truth, ladies and gentlemen. But and Jesus will not take in exchange for his righteousness our prayers, tears, and gifts or offerings, nothing else. Jesus doesn't take your righteousness and after you work a little more on it then receive you no 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 it is completely dependent on his righteousness that we are made righteousness and the moment you take hold of Jesus and put your trust totally in him you receive all of his righteousness through the amazing grace of Let me say to you, true faith always works by love. Galatians 5, 6, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails much, avails anything, but faith working through love. In other, in other words, the law will not save you. The law of, doesn't avail for anything, but faith working through love. Let me say to you, true faith always purifies the heart. Acts 15, 9 says, And made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. And also, obviously, purifying our hearts by faith, friends. As we, as we walk with the Lord and grow in Him, the Holy Spirit comes and purifies our heart, gets rid of all that junk and cleans it all out and purifies our heart. Our, our will, our emotions, our motives. As we put our faith in Christ, He comes and cleans all that up. And then lastly, true faith always overcomes the world. Oh, you guys. 1 John 5, 4. For, wherever, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Oh, you guys, whatever you're dealing with today is an opportunity to apply your faith and to see God do great and mighty things. And if you will lay hold of Jesus and keep holding on to Him, all the devils in hell will never ever be able to drive you away from God or put out your light. Hallelujah! Because greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. We are overcomers. We are victorious because of our faith and trust in God. Let's pray together, shall we? Jesus.